Hi, I'm Dr. Romano, professor of organic chemistry at Romano Scientific and the creator of Orgoman products and the author of the Dot Destroyer book. I'd like to go over a problem with you that's a hard-hitting organic chemistry question. Don't focus on the reaction itself, but focus on the chemistry. Okay, this is known as the Dakin oxidation reaction, and I'm sure you've never seen it, but let's just look at what's happening. You're gonna take four hydroxybenzaldehyde and you're gonna treat it with NaOH and peroxide, and you're gonna form 1,4-benzene diol. The minute you look at this, you can see some strange chemistry is happening. It looks like this carbon has to leave and, and O has got to attach. Where would I even start a problem like this? Well, if you notice what I've done, if you look at hydrogen peroxide, it's got an acidic proton. The base removes the acidic proton to give what we call the hydroperoxide anion. You've probably never seen this before. Normally in organic chemistry, you think of cyanide being the super strong nucleophile, and it is, but this is sort of a nucleophile on steroids. Um, it's one of the most powerful nucleophiles in all of organic chemistry. You probably won't ever come across it. Um, in advanced organic chemistry, you sort of learn about it. Um, it turns out that this has a very high energy orbital, which we call the HOMO orbital, high, highest occupied orbital. All I care about you knowing is a, it's a little monster. So as you can see, that nucleophile is going to attack the antibonding orbital of the carbonyl co compound. Now, focus on how the arrows are moving. That's what I want you to focus on. So when that moves to here, we now have this intermediate. Now, normally, you've probably only seen carbocation shift. When we get to that, we'll see all these different shifts. But this is unusual because we're going to see a shift but it's not in a carbocation environment, which is acidic. So as you can see, here's the million dollar move. Now I put this O in red so you can keep an eye on it. I'm gonna make three movements. This is gonna move down, this is gonna shift, and this moves out. When you did that, that gives me this compound here and you're, and you're about home. So that was the tricky part. This is an arrow shift. We see something like that in a reaction which we're gonna cover called the bayer villiger reaction. Now, once you have that, as you can see, we've expelled the OH minus. That OH minus comes back, attacks the carbonyl again, and now prepare for departure. As you can see, we now leave this group here, electrons move here, and we now have the formic acid. We have the formic acid, and here we have our anion, and then the last step, we simply deprotonate the formic acid, and we get form an anion, and there's our 1,4-benzene diol. Um, overkill? Maybe. We love overkill, though. We love to hit 30s. Um, I want to focus on the reaction itself. No one's going to ask you the Dakin reaction, but I want you to understand, and I want you to look at how I made the arrow movements and understand what every arrow movement is going to do. So don't be that worried about the chemistry, but understand the arrow movement. Tonight, we're in our Gen Chem here in New York. We're, gonna, we're finishing out it pretty quick. We're going to be going into organic. And when we get to the organic section, this will make a lot of sense when we really hit the organic. But this will be under mechanisms. So, but more importantly than the reaction itself, focus on the movements. What does each movement do? All right, that's it. I'll see you guys in study group. Good day to you.